In the last two years, I've spent about $4,000 on a three of five Casa Platinum multi-sig. And this is a lot of money to spend for most people when you could replicate a lot of the features that you're getting totally for free. And so when I renewed my multi-sig last year with Casa, I decided that over this next year, I would dedicate a lot of time to researching the free alternatives to continuing to use Casa for my multi-sig service. So that way when renewal came up next year, I would have a little bit more optionality and the ability to move over to one of these free services that I've set up over the past year, rather than continuing to pay that almost $2,000 annual fee. The free alternative to Casa's Platinum Plan that we'll be covering today is called Blue Wallet. Blue Wallet is available on iOS, Android, Mac, PC, and Linux. So you can get it pretty much anywhere. It's even available on Apple Watch if you're a f***ing psychopath. So let's go ahead and just set this up. I'm gonna be using a Mac today for the demo, but again, like we just talked about, you could be using any of those different platforms to set this up for yourself, and it's gonna be the exact same steps that we take here today. All right, guys, so if you haven't already downloaded Blue Wallet, you can go ahead and use the link down in the description. And again, it is for every operating system. So let's go ahead and once we've downloaded it, go ahead and open Blue Wallet. We'll see it start to load here. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is come up to preferences that's in the top left-hand side of our screen here on Mac. Once we open preferences, we're going to go here to general. And then by default, advanced mode is going to be turned off. We're gonna go ahead and turn on advanced mode. It's gonna give us a little bit more flexibility when we're creating our multi-sig. So now we are ready to create the multi-sig. Let's go ahead and click on add a wallet. And for now, let's do two of three Casa multi-sig replacement. And we'll go ahead and click on vault and we will create. So it says here by default, we're getting a two of three, but since we enabled advanced settings, we are able to go up all the way to a seven of seven multi-sig. I'm going to do a two of three today just because I don't want to mess around with a bunch of different hardware wallets, but you could change this to be whatever you want. And this is really why it's a great replacement to Casa in the long run is because you can for free here, just create a three of five multi-sig by yourself. For now, again, though, just for demo purposes, let's create a two of three. Click on done here and we'll click on let's start. So the first thing we're going to do here is let's create a new key to be our first key in our multi-sig. And again, we could create this on our iPhones, on our computers, on our Apple watches if we wanted to, or on our iPads. The key that I've created here, the seed is visible on screen. So obviously I'm not going to be using this wallet long-term, never show your seed phrase to anyone else or your funds will be compromised. But right now we have a desktop wallet that has just been created for vault key number one. So we can go ahead and click on done. So let's say here for vault key number two, instead of creating a desktop wallet or a mobile wallet using blue wallet, let's say we wanted something a little bit more secure. If we head over to this multi-sig wallet coordinator comparison chart here that I'll link down in the description, we can see that blue wallet is compatible with cold card, keystone, Spectre DIY, and the seed signer. And so we can go back to our blue wallet here and we can click on import and we're going to scan or import a file from our cold card. The way that we're gonna do that, we're just gonna come over here and turn on our cold cards. So we've got our cold card loaded up here and we're just going to come all the way to the bottom and click on settings. And then we're going to click on multi-sig wallets and then we're going to click on export XPUB. And this feature is basically going to export our cold card wallet in a way that is compatible with our blue wallet. So let's go ahead and click on check mark here and I'm not gonna give it an account number. If you've set up your cold card differently than me, you might have to give it an account number, but we'll see here that it has exported my XPUB to this file here, 3.json, because I've done this a couple different times. Let's go ahead and click on check. And now let's eject our little card here, and we can go put that SD card back into our computers. And so now back in Blue Wallet, we'll click on this upload from file icon down here, and we'll give it that dash three version from our cold cards. We'll click on open. So now we have our second vault key is good and ready to go. And now for this next wallet, I'm gonna go ahead and and create a blue wallet on my iPad and I'm going to import that blue wallet as the third key to our multi-sig here on our desktop. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on add a wallet here on my iPad. I'm gonna have a Bitcoin wallet. I'm gonna call this iPad wallet. Click on create. We will get our mnemonic phrase that we can write on a piece of paper here. I say, okay, I wrote it down. And now we have our iPad wallet. So I'll click on the three dots up here in the corner. And now once I click on those three dots, I'm gonna click on export or backup. And now if you were importing this on your phone, you would be able to just scan this QR code, but I'm just going to type in the private key here. And then once I've typed in the private key or scanned it using a camera, I can't scan it using a camera because my Mac doesn't have a camera that can recognize QR codes. So I'm going to click on just import here. And so now our vault key three is ready to go. So to recap real quick, we created vault key one right here on this Mac. We created vault key two here using our cold cards. And so vault key two is going to be the most secure of the three keys that we just created. And then obviously vault key three, we just took from the blue wallet that we just created there 
real quickly on our iPads. And so Vault Key 1 and Vault Key 3, while they're not as secure as something like a Ledger or a Trezor, they were very easy to create and very easy to, again, move across multiple devices. You could do this on an Android phone. You could do this on iOS. It doesn't have to be a Mac. It doesn't have to be an iPad. You can really get as creative with this as you want. Just again, keeping in mind that Blue Wallet is only compatible with Cold Card, Keystone, Spectre DIY, and Seed Signer. I tried to get it to work with the Ledger Nano S Plus, but I wasn't able to figure out how to export the XPUB from the Ledger Nano S Plus in a way that was consumable by Blue Wallet. I was able to export the XPUB from the Ledger Nano S Plus, but I think the file that you export has to be specific to a multi-sig. And so if you guys are interested, definitely leave a comment down below. In the future, I can make a video about how to create a multi-sig using the Sparrow Wallet or using Spectre, which are both compatible with Trezor, Ledger, and Cold Cards, as you can see here from this chart. And so while Blue Wallet is really great, it is limited in this way just because Trezor and Ledgers are the two biggest hardware wallets that most people, I think, have. And we will cover that later on when we talk about the pros and cons of this Blue Wallet setup. To finish here, though, let's go ahead and just click on Create on our Blue Wallet here. And this should be creating now our two of three multi-sig setup that we outlined earlier. So here we have two of three Casa multi-sig replacement. Let's go ahead and receive some funds to this wallet. We'll say, yes, we have done our backup phrase and we'll do okay for notifications. Let's go ahead and copy this to the clipboard and we will send some funds using our Umbral full node. We'll paste in our multi-sig address here and we'll make our amount 100,000 Satoshis. And we'll have that happen as soon as possible. Go ahead and send those Satoshis over to our multi-sig. If we load Blue Wallet back up here, we should hopefully see our transaction show up as unconfirmed here shortly. And there it is. We'll see we have a pending transaction, zero confirmation for 100,000 Satoshis. And so we're going to let this settle here for a little bit. And then I might show a quick demo on how to send funds from this blue wallet. But while we're waiting for this to confirm, let's go ahead and click on these three dots up here. And here's where we're going to export and backup our multi-sig and export our coordination setup. So let's go ahead and export the backup. So here we can go ahead and just screenshot this backup. And again, this is showing our actual seed phrases for the two blue wallet wallets that we created and our ZPUB for the cold card. So let's go ahead and screenshot this and we can save this, you know, in some secure place for later on. And then the second piece of information that we need here is the coordination setup. So here is the blue wallet multi-sig setup file. And this is basically a map of once we give it those three keys from the original backup that we just did, how can blue wallet now recreate the multi-sig that we just created using the map that we're generating here. So we can go ahead and click on share here on this map and we can go ahead and just save this on our desktops. And so once you have both of those files, you should always be able to regenerate the multi-sig that you just generated here today. All right, guys, so I have two confirmations now on this Bitcoin that we sent from our Umbral full nodes. And so now let's go ahead and send it back out of this two of three multi-sig that we just created. So let's go ahead and click on send. We'll make the note multi-sig demo and then we'll go grab an address here from Umbral. Paste in that address. Go ahead and hit next. Amount not valid. Duh, gotta set the amount. If we go ahead and click up here on the three dots, we can click on use full balance and we'll click on okay. So we're sending the max amount currently. So let's go ahead and click on next. Go ahead and click here on confirm. And so now we can see here the transaction coming back into my full node here. And I think the reason that we didn't have to sign anything with the cold card was if we came back up here and clicked on manage keys on our multi-sig here. We can see here for vault key one and vault key three, if you remember back to the demo, I created vault key one on this computer computer and I created vault key three on my iPad using blue wallet. If we click on view on either of these, we can actually see that the entire private key has been loaded into this vault. And so at any point, those two keys are going to be available for signing. If you were setting up your multi-sig to replace something like Casa, you probably wouldn't want to set it up like this. You would probably want to set it up with multiple hardware devices so that you did actually have to sign and that someone couldn't just come onto this computer and sign every transaction all the time anyway, because both of these wallets are fully loaded into Blue Wallet right now. And you can see that that's the case up here because it says signatures required to and can make from this computer too, right? So you would want always for there to be this can make to be less than the signatures required. Otherwise, whoever logs into this computer is just gonna be able to send Bitcoin as if this was a regular wallet. So next, let's just go ahead and jump into the pros and cons of this Blue Wallet setup. The best part of this setup is obviously like we talked about at the beginning of the video, this setup is totally free. Compare this to Casa where it costs you 
$120 a year for a two of three multi-sig, $1,800 a year for a three of five multi-sig, and then all the way up to $5,000 a year for a three of six multi-sig. When we put those numbers out there, Blue Wallet is clearly much better from a cost savings perspective. It's also cheaper than solutions like Unchained Capital, which we've covered previously here on the channel that I'll leave a link to up here in the cards. Unchained Capital charges you every single time that you use their key for signing, which is hopefully not going to be too often. But since Blue Wallet is free, it's obviously going to be cheaper than any solution that has any cost. Secondly, while solutions like Casa and Unchained Capital require that you use specific hardware that their services support, Blue Wallet is compatible with any Bitcoin wallet that you have, provided that you're able to import the XPUB into Blue Wallet. And then finally, you are able to create any kind of multi-sig within Blue Wallet up to a seven of seven like we saw earlier, versus being limited in your setup on Casa and Unchained Capital to the different numbers that they provide to you. So again, the options on Casa, two of three, three of five, and three of six. If you wanted to create something like a four of seven, you can't do that on Casa, but you could do that on Blue Wallet. As for the drawbacks of the strategy, we can quickly see some of them listed here on Casa's website. Compared to the Casa Platinum plan, you're not necessarily getting the protection of theft or unauthorized physical access. If you don't distribute your Blue Wallet multi-sig keys according to how Casa recommends that you distribute your keys, and you're not getting the loss during backup and recovery protection that Casa provides to you during your setup. That being said, if you do everything correctly and document your recovery process in the same way that Casa documents their recovery process, you can pretty much cover your bases on this point. And if you are interested in a video covering what the best way to back up your Bitcoin multi-sig is and follow those Casa best practices, definitely go down in the comments and let me know. If there is enough interest, I can do a video on just that topic so that you can be more confident in securing and reloading your multi-sig. So as far as the Casa Platinum plan goes, we can kind of mitigate those things that Casa does for us. We can sort of create our own systems to handle those processes ourselves. But if we move on to the Casa Diamond plan, we we aren't getting any inheritance planning features or the personalized support options from Casa, which if you want all that handholding and have $5,000 a year to spend, definitely go for it. It is a great service that's gonna go above and beyond what you're able to set up here for yourself using Blue Wallet. But for the rest of us, we can probably get by with self-created and well-documented inheritance planning alternatives. And we might not need to pay for such personalized support when there are so many resources available for free online. So overall here, the cons to this Blue Wallet setup are that you're not getting all of those personalized services that Casa and Unchained Capital are providing for you. And again, as we saw there during the Blue Wallet setup, while you are able to get access to wallets that you wouldn't be able to use on Casa or Unchained Capital, like a Blue Wallet mobile wallet for your multi-sig setup, Blue Wallet doesn't allow you to use Ledger or Trezor hardware devices, which are the two biggest hardware device manufacturers in the Bitcoin space. And so there are some major trade-offs there if you're not a cold card or Kobo Vault user. You're really trading off the security of ledgers and treasures for maybe the convenience of using something like an iPad or an iPhone or an Android tablet or an Android phone in your multi-sig setup. And so ultimately, while you do get a little bit more freedom in terms of you're able to use more kinds of wallets with the Blue Wallet multi-sig, you are locked out from using those two big hardware manufacturers in Ledger and Trezor. And so if that is a big deal to you, you might want to go with something like a Sparrow wallet, which again is going to be totally free but it does have more options for wallets that you can import and create different kinds of multi-sigs with. And again, if you are interested in seeing any of that Sparrow multi-sig content, definitely go down below and leave a comment. And if there is enough interest, I'll make a video comparing the Sparrow wallet to this Blue Wallet multi-sig setup. And then obviously compared to Casa and Unchained Capital, which are going to be the most mainstream ways that you can get your hands on a multi-sig. I view Blue Wallet as more of a self-sovereign option, whereas Casa and Unchained Capital are sort of like premium financial services. It's like if you wanted to outsource your wealth planning to someone like a bank, those services are definitely going to be right for some people who just want to save time and get the best security right out of the box. But it's not going to be right for everyone if you don't want to spend all of that money every year. And you would prefer to, instead of having them do everything for you, learn everything for yourself and become fully self-sovereign and responsible for all of your holdings. If you guys want to learn more about the differences between costs and Unchained Capital, definitely check out this video over here. And if you want to learn more about Blue Wallet and some of its other use cases, check out this video over here. That's it for today, guys. I love you all. See you next week.